Hello everyone. I'm excited to share that the Unity OpenXR meta package has been recently upgraded to version 2, currently available as a pre-release. This update introduces some interesting new features that I believe are worth exploring, especially for those of you who have been following my recent mixed reality tutorials for the MetaQuest 3. Thus far, these tutorials have used OpenXR Meta version 1. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to upgrade your project to version 2. But first, let's take a look at some of the new features. These features were highlighted by Andy BR, an XR developer at Unity, in a recent tweet. In fact, it was this tweet that alerted me to the release of the new OpenXR Meta package. According to Andy, this update introduces features like bounding boxes and meshing, which are generated from the Quest's room scan. Additionally, persistent anchors are on the horizon, a feature that I'm personally looking forward to. As you probably know, the OpenXR Meta package relies on AR Foundation to implement its augmented reality features. Recently, AR Foundation has also been upgraded to version 6. Additionally, the XR Interaction Toolkit has seen its version 3 release. To access all these new features, you'll also need to upgrade to Unity 6, which is currently in pre-release. In this tutorial, I'll guide you through all the necessary upgrades to utilize OpenXR Meta version 2 in your project. However, it's crucial to first back up your project to safeguard against any issues that may arise during the upgrade process. This tutorial is aimed at those who have completed my series on how to make a mixed reality app for the Quest 3. However, it may also be useful to anyone looking to upgrade their own Unity projects to OpenXR Meta version 2. Just a quick note before we start. This tutorial is split between two videos. This video, part 1, will take you through the process of updating the necessary packages and project settings. By the end of it, we should have a project with no build errors. However, there will be some missing functionality due to the fact that the AR Foundation API has changed. In part 2, we will update our scripts to be compatible with version 6 of the AR Foundation API. This update will restore full functionality to our project. Of course, if you would rather just download the upgraded project, it is available to Script Surveyor members of my Patreon community. Membership is available for a monthly subscription of just three US dollars. You will find a link to the project download page in the description. Okay, let's do it. Let's start by installing Unity 6. Open Unity Hub and click on Installs in the left sidebar. Now click the Install Editor button. Select the Pre-Releases tab. You should see the most recent beta version of Unity 6. Click the Install button. Check that the necessary modules are being installed with the Unity Editor. Since the MetaQuest is an Android platform, it is crucial to install all of the Android Build Support modules. We also want to install the Window Build Support or IL2 CPP module. When you are ready, click the Continue button. Agree to the Android SDK terms and conditions and click Install. Unity 6 should now begin installing. Once it has completed, select Projects in the left sidebar. In the Projects list, find your Quest 3 project. You should see an editor version number to the right of it. Click on it. Select the Unity 6 installation and then hit the Open with 6 button. A Change Editor Version dialog will appear. Click Change Version. Another dialog window. Click Continue to confirm the version change. Next, a script updating consent dialog will appear. Click Yes for these and other files that might be found later. An Enter Safe Mode dialog may appear. It will state that the project contains compilation errors. This is to be expected and something that will be fixed later. So please just click Ignore. Once the Unity editor has loaded, you will be greeted with a URP Material Upgrade dialog box. Just click OK. A deprecated packages dialog box will appear. Click on Open Package Manager. The package manager will open and retrieve a list of available packages. You may have noticed that the project validation window has also appeared. We will deal with this later. You can ignore it for now. Let's quickly check that we have pre-release packages turned on. Click the three dot menu on the package manager menu bar. 
select Project Settings from the drop-down. In Package Manager Settings, tick the Enable Pre-Release Packages checkbox. A Show Pre-Release Packages dialog will appear. Click I understand. You can now close the Project Settings window and return to the Package Manager. Let us now install the Unity OpenXR Meta Package. Go to the sidebar and select it from the list. Now select the Version History tab for this package. We can see that version 2 is not yet listed, therefore we are going to have to install the package by name. Click on the plus icon in the top left corner of the Package Manager. From the drop-down menu select Install Package by Name. A small input box will appear, containing two text fields. In the first text field, labelled Name, type the following com dot unity dot xr dot meta hyphen open xr in the second text field labeled version type 2.0.0 hyphen pre dot one now hit the install button to the right of the text fields version 2 of the unity open xr meta package will now be installed notice that this version is now also visible in the version history now let's upgrade the xr interaction toolkit to version 3 Find the XR Interaction Toolkit in the Packages list and select it. The version history shows version 3.0.1 as the recommended release, so let's go with that. Hit the Update button next to this version. A dialog box will appear, asking for script updating consent. Click on Yes for these and other files that might be found later. Next let's update AR Foundation to version 6. Scroll up the Packages list and find the AR Foundation package. Select it. The version history shows version 6.0.1 as the latest release. Update AR Foundation to the latest version. Click Yes on the Updating Package dialog box. OK. We've updated the main packages that the OpenXR Meta package depends on. However, there's one deprecated package that I would like to delete while we have the Package Manager open. Scroll down through the Packages list and find the Visual Studio Code Editor package. Select it and then click the Remove button in the top right of the window. A dialog box will appear. To confirm the package removal, click Remove. We have removed this package to prevent deprecated package warnings from popping up each time we restart the editor. Anyway, we can close the Package Manager now. OK, let's see what errors we have. Select the Console tab located in the lower section of the editor. There are a number of errors relating to TextMesh Pro. These can be eliminated by simply updating TextMesh Pro from the editor's main menu. Go to the top menu bar and select Window, TextMesh Pro, and then select Import TMP Essential Resources, followed by Import TMP Examples and Extras. With each import, you will be presented with an Import Unity package window. Just click the Import button each time. OK, so that should have dealt with those errors. Let's take a look at the XR Interaction Toolkit's Sample Assets. Select the Project tab. Then under Assets, expand the Samples folder. Within the XR Interaction Toolkit folder is a folder labelled with a version number. Note that this number does not correspond with the current version of XRI, which is version 3. We will need to return to the Package Manager to update these sample assets. Go to the top menu bar and click Window, and then Package Manager. Find the XR Interaction Toolkit package and select it. Now click on the Samples tab. Update the starter assets. Click Yes on the Importing Package Sample dialog to confirm the update. Now update AR Starter Assets also. The import has triggered Project Settings to open on the Project Validation page. An issue has arisen. It states that we need to switch to use stick control thumbsticks instead of vector to control. We can fix the issue from this window by simply clicking the fix button next to the issue. If we scroll down, we can see that there is one more outstanding issue. This time I'm going to click the fix all button in the top right corner to make sure that we resolve everything. Okay, we can now close project settings and let's also close the package manager. Make sure that the Project tab is selected. Notice that the XR Interaction Toolkit samples have been updated to version 3.0.1. Now go to the Hierarchy view and select the XR Origin. Take a look at the inspector. 
Notice that in the scene controller, the toggle plane's input action is missing. This is because our project relies on a default input actions asset from the starter assets folder. And this folder has of course been overwritten, deleting our toggle planes action in the process. Let's fix this by recreating the action. In the starter assets folder, double click on XRI default input actions. This will open the asset in the input actions editor. In the input actions window, go to the action maps list and select XR right hand interaction. A set of actions belonging to this action map will appear in the actions list. Right click in the empty space beneath this list and from the context menu select add action. Call the new action toggle plane. Make sure the action is expanded. Directly beneath it there should be an empty binding slot. It currently says no binding. Select it. Head over to the binding properties panel on the right. Directly below binding there is a path field with a drop down menu. Click on it. From the drop down select XR controller and then Oculus touch controller. Scroll up and select the right hand Oculus touch controller. Lastly, select the primary button. As you may recall, the primary button corresponds to the A button on the touch controller. OK, we are finished here. Go to the top of the window and hit the save button. Close the input actions editor. Now, in the hierarchy view, let's reselect the XR origin. In the inspector, go to the scene controller script. Click on the target icon to the right of the toggle planes action field. You will be presented with a list of available input actions. Find the toggle planes action and double click to select it. Next, we want to make sure that only the new action based input system is active. Go to the top menu bar and click edit and then project settings. In project settings, make sure the player section is selected in the left sidebar. In the player panel, scroll down to the configuration subsection. At the bottom, you will find the active input handling setting. Set it to input system package new. You will be prompted to restart the editor. The editor has restarted. There is just one other setting to change. The graphics compatibility mode is currently active, which means that the render graph API is disabled. We need to enable it. Since our project uses the standard universal render pipeline, this is safe to do. In project settings, select the graphics section in the sidebar. Scroll down to the bottom of the graphics panel. Under the render graph subsection, you will find the compatibility mode checkbox. Disable it. This will, in effect, enable the render graph API. You can close project settings now. OK, let's test our build. Make sure you have saved everything and then build and deploy the app to your Quest headset. The app should build and run just fine. However, you may notice that there is no color coding on the plane visualization. Also, object spawning and spatial anchors will not work. This is expected and is due to changes in the AR Foundation API. We will address these issues in part two of this tutorial. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next installment. See you in part two.